Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the seventh state of OSPF. So already we have discussed about the fundamentals of OSPF and step-by-step uh, -step designing and implementation of OSPF in practical in our other videos. So in this video, we are going to see how a OSPF network is formed uh, by undergoing this seven states. Okay. So these are the seven states of OSPF. That's down state, init state, two-way state, extract state, exchange state, loading state, and the full state. So before going uh, into the states, uh, we need to understand one more important thing. Nothing but the router ID. Though we have discussed about this in our uh, previous videos, uh, let's go through what is a router ID. A router ID is nothing but, uh, it's, it's like a name of a router which is used in YSPF. Generally, uh, we can configure during the YSPF configurations. Though it's not a mandatory, it's a best practice to do. Even if it, if we if you are not configuring the router ID, it will the router will be automatically taking or assuming one uh, IP as the router ID. There are some rules for it. Say for example, if a router has a loopback IP address configured, then the loopback IP address is considered as the router ID. And for a, if a router has a multiple loopback IP address, then the highest among the loopback will be considered as the router ID. Uh, or if a router does not have any loopback and if it has only the uh, physical interface IP address, then the highest among the physical interface IP addresses will be considered as the router ID. So with this router ID only, uh, a router will go through this states of OSPF to form the OSPF network. Okay. Let's get into the states. So this is the very first state, uh, a down state. So, uh, for a better understanding, I have taken a scenario. Uh, so, let's discuss the seven states with this scenario for a better understanding. Okay. So, in my scenario, I have taken a two router that is router R1 and R2. I have uh, used 192.168.0.0.24 as for a communication. And uh, each router has their own LAN segment. Okay. In 117, sorry, 172.16 network. So, in the down state, it is the very first state. So when we are configuring a router, uh, when you are configuring OSPF in a router, it will be in the down state. Okay. So one, once we have configured the OSPF in a network, the router will send a hello, hello packet to the neighbors, right? Till that point, it is in down state. Okay. And in, uh, in down state, a router will not receive any hello packet from the neighbor till a router can send a hello packet, but it will not receive a hello packet. Till that point, it is a down state. So uh, let's think if it's a, if, if you are bringing a new router, if you are configuring a OSPF, a router does not know about it neighbor. Then how does it sense the hello packet? It is by the multicast IP address. So the multicast IP address of the OSPF is nothing but 224.0.0.5 and 224.0.0.6. So in this scenario, say for example if i am configuring uh, ospf in router 1 so as soon as i uh, starts to advertise a network this router 1 will send a hello packet to the multicast ip address 224.0.0.5 so once this hello packet is multicasted it will be uh, once this hello packet is sent to this particular multicast address then the packet will be multicasted to all the routers in this particular ospf network so this is how a router will send a hello packet to all the neighbors I mean to say all the routers all the devices in the ospf network as soon as it is configured okay let's go into the next state it's in its state uh, this is the state where the neighborship building process will be started okay so as the R1 has uh, multicasted the hello packet in the down state, now all the router has received the hello packet from R1, right? So generally the hello packet contains uh, router ID, area ID information, then hello interval, hold down timer, stub valve, stub flag, and the MTU values, okay? So basically these are the informations which is available inside the hello packet. That is one common rule. Uh, in order to form a neighborship okay, between two routers, both the routers should have uh, a same essential configuration values. I mean to say the hello interval, the downtime timer, the stub flag, and MTU uh, value and all, right? Those information need to be 
same in both the router in order to form a neighbor ship so in uh, in the state uh, uh, sorry in the down state r1 has already multicasted the hello packet and now r2 in the init state r2 has received once we configured the ospf now r2 has received the hello packet from the r1 which is multicasted okay so now once the r2 received the hello packet from r1 it will compare its own hello packet that is the essential configuration value so if it matches it it will add r1 as its neighbor table so it will assume that r1 is is its possible neighbor and it will add r1 in its in its neighbor table but still in this point even in this point r1 does not know about r2 and it it doesn't have any idea about r2 and r1 will start to learn about r2 only when r2 send a response to its hello packet in the third level okay so in the down state r1 sends the multi in the down state r1 sends the multicast hello packet in init state now r2 has received the hello packet and uh, he it's checked the essential value and as it's matching it added the r1 in its neighbor table and have not yet sent the response so in the two way state now uh, uh, as r1 already uh, sorry r2 already added the r1 in its neighbor table now r2 will response to r1's hello packet that is it, it r2 also will send an hello packet to r1 but this time it will not send a multicast address instead it will send an unicast address to the as a reply to the r1 because now it has the information about the r1 which it, it learned from the its hello packet okay so <clears throat> so once r2 sends a hello packet to r1 now in this hello packet there will be an additional information that is nothing but the neighbor table data field okay so from uh, from this uh, field now r1 will understand that it is already added in r2's neighbor table so it will it will consider that r2 its possible neighbor and it again it will compare its own hello packet and uh, if the essential configuration values are matches then r1 will also now add r2 in its neighbor table so this is how it works so once r1 now added r2 r2 in its neighbor table then a bidirectional communication is formed then a hello packet will be exchanged between both the routers in a regular time interval so next one the fourth state is nothing but the extract state where the negotiation takes place to decide whom whom should first share the database descriptor so uh, in this scenario we have uh, two two routers as we discussed earlier r1 and r2 so now the uh, in the last state uh, neighbor ship is formed a bidirectional communication starts so now uh, a negotiation will be taking place who should first send the database okay so in order to uh, uh, finalize the negotiation a master slave relationship is formed there is a rule generally a router which has the highest router id will become a master and start to share the database so say for example in this uh, uh, scenario if r1 sends a request saying that uh, i have a router id 192.168.0.1 and i starts to exchange the dbd but r2 will reject it saying that no i will start to exchange because i have a highest router id than you 192.168.0.2 is highest right so this guy will say no i have a highest id than you so i will start to exchange so this negotiation takes place in the extract state so opposed to that is uh, exchange state so once the negotiation is finalized then uh, now uh, as r2 is a, uh, as r2 is a master and r1 is the slave r2 will now send the uh, dbd packet first and next r1 will send its dbd packet so the dbd packet generally consists of uh, link state advertisement headers and the entire link state database the database of the network so in the exchange state both the routers has exchanged their lsdb database so the next one is the sixth state a loading state so in the loading state each router will compare the link state database received from the neighbor with its own database so when it's comparing if it find uh, any entry was missing then the router will send in a request the link state uh, request to the neighbor asking to share the entire network so once the neighbor receive the link state request it will update it will, uh, it will send an a link state update packet with the information requested by the uh, other neighbor so once the uh, 
uh, once he received the link state update again he will send an acknowledgement for it so in our scenario um so for example r2 has a, a lan lan network which r1 doesn't know now okay so uh, as soon as the link state database is shared r2 will compare the link state database that was received by r r2 okay so when uh, r1 is comparing uh, with the link state database that's received by uh, received from r2 with its own database uh, if it finds that 172.16.20.0.24 is missing i'm taking just for example okay so once it finds that it is missing then it will send an uh, lsr that's a request packet link state request packet saying that i need a complete entry of the network so and so so as soon as r2 receives this request he will send a link state update which contains the in entire information which is requested by the r1 so as soon as r1 received the information he will send an link state acknowledgement packet as that he received it so this is how loading state work and in full state now both the routers are fully adjacent and the database of both the routers are completely synced with each other so whatever information of r1 has it is uh, those information uh, is available in r2 also and whatever information r r2 already has now those information is available in r1 also so this is what full state is and uh, so this is how the ospf state works and whenever we are we are uh, designing or when, whenever you are implementing a ospf network this is how the network devices will undergo a router will undergo uh, the states to form a ospf network